I'm Eleanor Fellows and Max McVicker and we're just here today having a little catch up about the upcoming RWS tournament. Um, so your current record, correct me if I'm wrong, is 25 to 3. Is that right? Um, I, I believe so. But yeah. It kind of get it gets a bit choppy because obviously I'm from I'm from England and I fought like loads and loads of amateur fights as a kid. And then when I moved to Australia, the way it worked is like they don't let amateurs really uh, kids compete as professionals. So until you're 18, you're in padding. Um, which is like yeah, until you're 18. So it's like if my style until you're 18. Oh, I don't. Um, but then, but then, um, okay. when I went to, when I could go to Thailand, I would fight professional. So I would work between the two. So to be honest, some of my fights wouldn't be like on right. record. I I think I don't know. I've just sort of had a guess. I started guessing. Probably I probably started guessing and then just added. I just have been adding one since. Yeah, if that makes no. sense. So I understand it. So like every country has their own way of doing it to protect people. Yeah. And so how come you actually? Mm-hmm moved to Australia just family or born? yeah so when when I was I was 10 I think it was my dad like ended up being in and out of one job and sort of looking for the next one and as he was my uncle had already moved to Perth um and so I moved with my dad because my dad got offered a job out in Perth so I was in Perth for I think it was nine years nearly 10 years something like that and then I moved to Canberra which is the other side of Australia and it's way yeah. colder and not near the beach so <laughs> some people would call me nuts but I did it for at the time it made a lot of sense with training and and yeah. also it offered me like a full-time employment at the time as well in, in in Muay Thai which was quite rare in Australia at the time exactly so. obviously you work with Kieran now don't you is it more yeah, you, yeah, is more it just you. more you yeah. Muay Thai, is that how you... Muay Yu, Canberra, Muay Yu, yeah. yeah. Everyone knows Muay Yu, so yeah. It's yeah, because right, it, it's so. actually, um, it's so mad because the your last fight at RWS, I was I met Kieran that morning. So it's all... Oh, really? Yeah, I was with him and yeah. he's such a nice guy. Like, I can tell, I followed your gym for quite a while and, and him, I love his content on Instagram and you can tell that mm. you all have such a good relationship and, and I think that's such a good place for you to be. Like, I mean, I sometimes yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow, that is such a good job. <laughs> You've got like Gabrielle, Kieran, David, like you just all seem like a really close, close-knit family. Yeah. yeah it's, it's nice good. to see. That's the best thing about Muay Thai, but yeah. Mm. Um, so obviously you had two fights on RWS now, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the last mm. one was, I'm going to butcher this name, but it's Harassimenko. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think so, yeah. Them, like, I'm like, oh, I really hope I can say that name. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, let's just address the elephant in the room, I suppose, that you were meant to fight Sajjad on that yeah. day. And then mm. um, he pulled out due to injury and training. But, I mean, apparently he could fight... The next week which I suppose yeah. everyone is a little bit I'm not sure about that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but obviously when that fight was originally announced fight record said that that was like the biggest foreigner v foreigner matchup on RWS um what do you think of Sajjad as a like a fighter in general and are you excited like do you want to fight him are you hungry for that fight I suppose yeah I mean I that fight for, I mean, Australian Muay Thai followers know that that fight was actually scheduled for November of 2023, I think it was. Oh so Sajad had had been in the RWS tournament and come out of it that year yeah. and was scheduled to defend his WBC world title at welterweight against me yeah. in that November. Yeah. Um, which I was I was real happy about because he's the champion and he was willing to come to Australia to come and fight for it, yeah. which was cool. And then he fought, I think it was six weeks before he fought on one championship and broke his hand. Oh, I mean, that's just a given on one championship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's obviously um at the time, and I, I suppose if I if I start if I address the elephant in the room for anyone who like has an opinion on the subject. As a fighter in Thailand, it, it's like people fight really regularly and they just they, they do just take fight to fight. However, as a as a world champion and as a professional fighter, 
it is your job and your management's job to take calculated risks and to uh, to hold your word to certain promotions and certain contracts and certain obligations because your word is only worth so much and you build it over time, but you can lose it yeah. very quickly. Um, I could agree so, more. Yeah, there's that, there's that to take into account the first time it happened. Of course, I would never expect Sajjad to fight me with a broken hand. That'd be silly. Um, and and I'd never wish him an injury as well, that sort of thing. But yeah. in that moment, the the reality of, what, of, of that was, you're a world champion who is scheduled to defend your belt. Is it wise to take a fight six weeks beforehand? Probably not. He's a guy I consider my friend, so I don't hold it against him. I don't care. Like, yeah. it's fine. But if I was just to judge from it as an outside perspective, if I was playing like devil's advocate with what people thought of him, and that was one thing. And I feel like it sort of just got breezed over um, the first time. And then, of course, we were scheduled to fight the second time. And I think because there was so much anticipation in the first fight, RWS just wanted to get it on. You yeah. Know, they wanted to see the yeah, fight and do. just do it. And so they put it forward. And for, for me, it was fine. I don't really mind. Like, I feel like um, I even had a conversation with my mom um like a few months and it might have been a couple months before that fight happened was meant to have happened mm. but it got actually got scheduled quite early in the year so it was it was way ahead of time it got scheduled yeah um for us to fight and I'd been watching his fight the day before on RWS and I was speaking with my mom who watched a bit of Muay Thai as well and I said oh mom I think me and him will be like the two foreigners that fight each other maybe five times something like that really? you know I was I was I said to her that and then the next day I got a call and it was like oh that you, you fight Sajad in November I was like ah oh, yeah like I kind of saw this one coming um I didn't know it would be as soon as it was but I definitely saw it coming um and then so going back to when it got matched the second time yeah um he obviously I started to see a couple of things on his social media he stopped engaging with the content that was about the fight and things like that and him and I talk a little bit and I started to get the feel that like it. it wasn't happening. You know, I just sort of knew it wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, again, he obviously has respect for me and, and wants me to fight, like have a good opponent and fight against him. Um, but also I think there's that element of like, well, if he clearly knows that if he's not at his very, very, very best, well, he doesn't have a chance of winning. And so I think a lot of people... I feel like I sit on the fence somewhere, right? Like it's a lot of people <laughs> want to say he's ducking, he's scared. That's one thing, right? But I don't believe he's scared because I know he's a very, very good fighter. I don't think anyone at this level, it, I often say like when people say someone's scared, like why would he be scared of me for he beat Yoke Yeah. You know, he's fought yeah. Hercules. No, it's you know, part of the game team. though. I think fighting, it plays mental tricks on you though sometimes and you just can't quite pinpoint it. But I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, he's so he's, he's fought some good people. So there's no reason for him to be afraid of me. Mm. But he's obviously concerned about losing to me if he's going to pull out. I think you should take it as a compliment injury. though. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I would, of course. You should definitely take um, it as a compliment. Yeah. And like I said to him, I said, I said, because uh, he messaged me and told me about his knee and said he'd clash knees in training and whatnot. And like I said, he's he's just a person. It's just a sport. Yeah. Like I don't I don't care. It's, at the end of the day, it's not me who is there to watch it. I'm just I'm there as the athlete, and it's our job to get paid and go home and at the end of the day. So people, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, yeah. So, so I'm I'm not bothered by it, but at the same time, again, like this is where like from a professional standpoint, if you're gonna pull out of a fight one week it isn't wise to then take a fight the following week and then be upset yeah. with what people have to say as an as an athlete we are in the public eye and people are going to have opinions on us and how we conduct ourselves reflects on our character and like and and people are going to have opinions and we we have no say in that people are going to yeah. have opinions and like, yeah like you say, yeah, it always they, reflects on future opportunities as well. Mm, so, got they, to like... the, the, my my sort of point is like, let let them have like. If I gave advice to him, it'd be let them have their opinions. That's fine because, like, it creates a it creates a better fight for us in the end. At the end of the day, anyway, more yeah. people are going to watch. 
because you know a few people commented on his post that he's a duck or that you know like <laughs> you know, yeah i'm not it's not my it's not my um place to comment it's my job to fight but that's obviously what he's copped a bit mm. on social media and he's bitten back and i think biting back is like oh, it's not worth it you know these people it's these not- people they might be they might just be fans of me and or the supporters of me and they're just trying to get at him and he's biting at it and he's you know it's like Manage, yeah, it's better to manage himself and just like worry about fighting it's difficult than... though it is difficult to just have that thick skin when people are like chipping away and then obviously if you may be in a bad place mentally because he maybe really really did want to take this fight but like you said he wanted to be at his very best so I mean mm. you, you spoke like a true diplomat there very uh, <laughs> yeah. very neutral I was like if that was like boxing yeah. or something there'd be trash talk yeah, left right yeah. center that's that's yeah, what that's i like mine. about muay thai is that everyone <laughs> just wants to get on i suppose maybe, maybe like, that's why i'm not maybe that's why we're not on boxing money that's <laughs> <laughs> maybe i hope one day but i mean yeah personally my opinion is just you know on one championship the damage is going to be more so i just wouldn't have took that fight but like you say you live and learn, make mistakes, and then hopefully you'll learn from it next time. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I think it's about management and and who you surround yourself with as well. Like, that's yes. important. and I mean, like, we it, aren't. It sometimes... we aren't, yeah, we aren't making million yeah. dollars, millions of dollars. So maybe the money by management was the. I mean, one championship bonus money. You know, you can always get yeah, it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Always. So is. the next person in the tournament that I wanted to ask you about is obviously Yod Yodvicha has moved to welterweight um yeah. how do you feel about that are you excited are you, were you shocked did you see it coming um, I, wa- I wasn't shocked because um one of one of my trainers quite a well-known trainer in Thailand Sam from Sitwon Chai he is like my padman on a day-to-day basis and he's also friends with Yodri Chai's partner right. so <laughs> so they'd already been they'd already been talking about it on Facebook back and oh, forth and I'm 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 pretty sure Yabrucha had like a a bit of similar battle to what you were saying about uh, the one championship RWS thing. Like yeah. a lot of fighters are stuck in this predicament now where they might be able to get some bonuses on one or they can stick with RWS and it's safe money, but it's not crazy money. And so it's like you can you can choose the the longer career or you can choose the hopefully getting a big break and making a bunch of money career. Yeah. And um, Yabrucha chose to steer towards the tournament um i i'm a big fan of him and i've watched obviously it grow i grew up watching yoda child you know when he was yeah. 16 years old um i know that he beat i think he beat three of the big stadium fighters including like pep Bunchu and, and sanchai at oh, 16 years old in one year that. you know he that's was, before he my was, time <laughs> yeah like a child a child prodigy so um He's been around a long time and obviously everyone's seen him fight. Everyone's seen him style, his style and stuff like that. Um, interesting, he choose to come down to 147 because I'm I'm fairly certain he missed weight in his last fight and that was at like 153. So um, it, I'm not concerned. Don't really bother me. My style, I can fight people bigger than me. Small, like It just doesn't matter. Do you know, I don't care. Um, but I'd be interested to see if he does make weight. Um yeah. Because because it also it's a, it's a well known fact that the ties are still twenty years behind in terms of yeah weight I was just so. gonna say obviously last night Rod had missed weight and hydration and I don't I don't mm. think he works with a nutritionist um but yeah I feel like the ties are just kind of yeah I'll just turn up and get on the scales sometimes <laughs> yeah they're missing the science and I think I think say for example Rod Tang a good idea would have been just like I mean he's making so much money. Just, just pay for a nutritionist or a dietitian. I know, I know. I mean, it's like I, I think us Westerners, we were so much more educated on it. Like you say, I actually had a little stalk of your Instagram to see if you worked with anyone. <laughs> and it's, is it a, a cut above nutrition? I saw a video. Yeah, yeah, it's Campbell and, from a cut above. Yeah, and you've, is it three fight camps you've done with him now? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it's, it'll be three. This is our, this is our fourth now coming yeah. into this one. Yeah. And obviously, like, do you feel just like so much better? Like, having it does it take the stress off you? I suppose for making weight and things like that. Like, what would you say yeah. is like, the main benefit I th- for you? I think for me, it's like because I've been I've been cutting weight in quite an educated manner before he came on board. Yeah. Um, 
however, what it what it does for me is like it just takes the plan like the planning out of it is a huge like part of it. Like I don't have to plan anything. Yeah. You sort of and and the other thing is like knowing when I had quite a bad relationship with food through like my teenage years just because I was like training for fights, but no one really talked about it then. Like no, everyone they didn't. everyone nowadays starting getting dietitians and stuff. But back then I was like turning into a man growing and then trying to cut while weight. trying to lose weight and I just like it, it messed up yeah. my when I used to look at a plate of food I'd see calories I'd see you know like I wouldn't yeah enjoy it's food, hard so. it is really especially yeah. if you're like constantly worried about the scales I suppose if you're fighting regularly mm. as a kid yeah yeah a big a big portion of it for me has been like fixing a bit of a relationship with food learning not to bounce back after fights and sort of just um knowing knowing like that eating that extra bit to today isn't failing myself for having not discipline it's like oh i'm very sore i've got two means of making sure i'm not sore tomorrow it's sleep and nutrition so i've got eating off and sleeping off for tomorrow i'm already sleeping but i'm waking up sore okay i'm probably not eating enough you know it's like just doing those letting myself have the food rather than like seeing it as a discipline issue if i just eat and then in, in in sort of consequence i don't i don't binge and i don't like yeah I'm not starving myself anymore you know that sort of stuff you know that is such an important message like i've i find it really interesting this is kind of what i want to go into eventually like snc nutrition for fighters um, and i just find it so interesting the science behind it and obviously the methods for the weight cut like it's mad like I'm in a gym now I'm at Sordetch Pant with westerners and ties and the methods are just worlds apart and it is and we're like yeah. we're so much more fueled and energetic and they're like cutting weight all week yeah. and it's just it blows my mind <laughs> but yeah as long yeah. as like that's so good though that you are like fixing that relationship and I hope that maybe boys like especially the boys at my gym back home like teenagers are they I've seen it and they're like, oh, I can't have that squares bar before training and they're training like Mm. starving. And I'm like, no, Mm. no, no, you can have it. You can have it. You're only 14. So I hope Mm. that someone takes something away from that. Um, Just going Mm. back to the tournament. So um, in your group, who do you think will make it to the knockout stages? That's actually a really good question. <laughs> yeah. This is Gary's question. That's why I have to. Yeah, this is a good, sure that's a good that question. That is a good question because which two? Um, you can do two. Of of well, of course, I'm going to put myself in there because that'd be silly not to. <laughs> back yourself. So back yeah, yourself. yeah, I would I would assume that I I make it, and then um, I dare say, in as much as I like watching Hercules, I don't see him beating. So he's already lost to Sajad once. I know it was a split points decision, but he lost to Sajad one time. And I don't think it was Sajad's best performance either. Okay. Um, I think when Sajad's on point, um, he's beaten Hercules nine times out of 10. Interesting. And um, if I take into account his last performance against Tal um, he he kind of, he folded under the pressure of, of Tal And so... The pressure of Yovichar is like somewhat similar, at least. Um, and I also think the name of Yovichar in Thailand will weigh heavy on Hercules. Like it's quite an intimidating mm, yeah. thing for him. Whereas, yeah. I mean, for us Westerners, we I feel like it's slightly, you know, the high brand is not so much. The ties can be quite like, you know, oh, you're fighting Yovichar, you may as well just admit you're going to lose. Like that's the way that they might treat Hercules. Oh. So I think that he'd write himself off too, because I know he has some confidence issues in himself already. Okay. Um, so that I sort of like put him out of the group. I wouldn't assume he would make it. And I think then it depends on Sajad being able to deal with Yovichar's pressure, because I don't doubt his skill set um, as a fighter. I think his skill set alone beats Yovichar's, but Yovichar's big, he hits hard. He's yeah. gonna make it really difficult. Like he's pretty so Jad is in a very similar boat to what I am. Like it's whether you can control the mayhem that he's gonna come and bring, you know, he's gonna be bigger, yeah. he's gonna be strong, and he's gonna swing at you and he's probably gonna try and knock you out. He does I have a crazy the, style. I do like watching. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> the, the days of Yodvichar the clincher, those who watch old stadium fights know him as like a 
you know, he, he grabs onto you and it's like a death grip. He's just kneeing and kneeing and yeah. he's putting pressure on you that way. But I think gone are those days. Now he just wants to punch your head off. He just, he wants he to punch you. He wants to, yeah, he wants to knock you out. And and like, I mean, that's sort of, he's gone with the the style that Thailand's gone towards in general. Everyone's trying to mm-hmm. knock each other out and one and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think also in, in my, in my opinion, it like, he's not as effective as a puncher as he was a clincher. Oh. Um, I hope you can't speak English because <laughs> then when we fight, he might change. You'll be Google fight, translating but... this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, um, if he comes out and tries to clinch me and Sajad, I think then he will have a very, he'll have a much better chance of, coming out. of beating either of us. But if he comes out and he punches, well, punches are, at the end, of, like he's not, he's not a natural puncher. He's a clincher, and the way he's been punching and elbowing is good against low-level foreigners. But Sajad and I aren't low-level foreigners. Yeah, you're. The, so yeah, that's the best. That's the best. That's it. So it's like he's, I, and I think there's a little bit of like he's old school. So he sees us as white boys, not in a nasty way, but he sees us as foreigners. That's the Thai he's, culture, though, isn't it? They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. He, he I understand. Us, he sees us as young and like uh, he might assume that we might be like a bit intimidated by him. But at the end of the day, we, without his clinching, he's just another puncher. And I don't think, I think maybe he'd be arrogant enough to do it in the first fight against me. But then if he changes his mind and he changes the way he fights in the second one, I think he can beat Sajad. But then if he stays punching, I don't think he wins. Okay. So fan, I need your final answer. Oh, um, Yourself? Myself. And uh, I don't think Yablachan makes it through. I think Sajad beats him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then my follow up to that is the other group. Yeah, that one's a bit easier for me. I think yeah. uh Topokiao makes it no problem and Chujuran makes it through too. Because um I mean, looking at Topokiao, he's just on a different scale. Again, I think Erdem's a good fighter, but he's not he's not like uh, someone's gonna it's, you can turn this against me now Adam's gonna hate me for this but I don't think I, I don't think he's on the level that the boys in that group are on mm. um, I dare say Senpon's hit and miss too I, I yeah I wouldn't put him on the same level as the other boys and Tudor it's kind of whether he um, belongs on RWS I haven't watched him fight too yeah. much on RWS yet um, but he's he's obviously he's the, I think he's the current Omnoy Stadium champion, but it's like different worlds. It's fighting a in a different. stadium. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it, compl- it, especially with the betting at Omnoy, it really changes the fight there. Yeah, we we, we talk about Rajad Amnon as if it's one of the stadiums and Lumpini Stadium as if it's one of the stadiums, but now the reality is they're not. They they're are not. the stadiums, but they're not scored. When we talk about stadium Muay Thai, they're not scored like that anymore, and no, so it's, it's like. It's, it's a different translation, so... I think you have to yeah. experience them both to understand what we're saying. I feel like people that are watching might be like, but, but what are you on about? But no, you have to be there to understand how the betting and the, the influences changes everything. So yeah. I think from what you're saying is you've definitely, I don't know if you see it as drawn the short straw, but you've got the harder group. <laughs> um, Yeah, I think the, the difficult thing is about this tournament and why so people are so excited is because there's no easy fight, really. No, I mean, there's no, there's no easy fight whatsoever, and there's no sort of like, I, I would, there's no death group either, you know, because it's, think- it's like Ooh, we were talking about they're pre- this. They're they're pretty even for me. Like, um, I mean, I'd I'd say the favorite in. I mean, I feel like the favorite in Thailand would be Telpoki out would be the favorite in Thailand. Right. I mean, Yodvicha coming down might make things a bit awkward and change things, but. Um, He's the current champion. He he. I mean, he beat Hercules with ease, right? It wasn't even yeah. close in the fifth round. Hercules was telling the ref that he was too good for him. You know that he was turning to the ref and refusing to fight. So to to <laughs> consider them in the same, you know what I mean? He's the he's the guy right now. So I'd say he's probably the favorite. He's in the other group, but yeah. as a whole, I think then the the group that I'm in is a bit more difficult. Like it's it's more rounded in terms of like Hercules was the last champion. Um, and then uh, obviously Sajad is very skillful and difficult to deal with. I'd say I'm in a similar position. Yeah. And then Yodvich has just come down from 
what 154 and it's, it's anyone's game monster. really it's anyone's yeah. game but that's that's what you love about that's what i love about fighting is that sometimes you just can't predict because when you're in the ring that one shot that opening it just changes the game it is just so unpredictable mm. sometimes that's why i never ever place a bet on any fights <laughs> yeah <laughs> so obviously i was going to ask you who do you think would win the tournament beside yourself because we're back in well I shouldn't say that. I'll back you all the way. But um, <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, you know, English. But um, who who do you think, besides yourself, that you see coming out on top, like on top? Right. I mean, if 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 you were forcing me to pick... Uh, I am forcing. What one name? Yeah, forcing me to pick. I can narrow it down to, outside of myself, I can narrow it down to two who I think would be would be the top two yeah. um and it would be Yovicha and Topol Kiao yeah would be the two um the the reason being Yovicha's size I think him just being big would be able to help him and the yeah. intimidation factor I feel like it'll affect the ties more than it'll affect that's this. really interesting actually I might even ask yeah. the guys at my gym like the trainers what they think and try and get their opinion because it is interesting i never thought about that as a factor like the mental mm. like them, how they see experience and things oh we yeah might, we've got 10 minutes left on my recording just to let you know that's okay no that's sweet um i think yeah like a, they they often get like a, they're very straight with the way they talk right like they yeah they often say things very literally and and sometimes they'll just be like if there's a fight that they feel like they can't win you'll hear a champion say, oh, I'm not ready to fight him. It, in England, like, what? you would just never say you're, that. You're the, you're the, you're the Rajan Learn champion. You're not ready to fight what? What do you mean you're not ready to fight I him? Know. It's like, but they'll plainly say, like, I can't win. I can't beat him. You know, never in my, uh, in my entire existence will you ever catch me saying, I can't beat him during a fight. Like, it'd just be so, like, it would be against my nature. Yeah, but to hear Hercules him. say that about somebody that he's now got to fight to win the tournament again, and he only said it a couple months ago, not even. It's mad. That's ludicrous. Yeah, so... It is a proper yeah, cultural think, thing, yeah. Yeah, I think the... Tal Palkiao is the one to beat. Okay. I think Yodvicha is getting to that position where now he's done a lot in his career and it's coming to an end. Yeah. He's training and he's fighting specifically for money. I know most of them are fighting just for money anyway, but he is there's Topol Kiao has got a lot to 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 gain still. And Yon is this will be his last tournament, you know, like yeah. he's, he's almost done. Um we'll see if he makes weight as well, I suppose. Yeah, that's and that's a factor. Too. Um so I saw that you were training last time you were here at Eminent Air Boxing Gym in Bangkok. Is that right? Mm. Are you gonna I just I sort of yeah I stopped I stopped in just for one 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 time um, right. really because they're friends we have friends that train there are you going to um, be training there or uh, throughout the tournament or are you going to can you not say I don't know I don't know so I mean I can I can say um you don't have the, to just uh, this was something the, that I was genuinely interested so in I'll let I'll let you know like on the plan the sort of the plan was to go to um originally was to go to Luxwan Oh yeah, um, that was like a really which was that was the original plan, and um, I do believe that Yodvicha drops in and trains there now. So, oh, <laughs> so it kind of makes things impressed. a bit difficult. Yeah, yeah, makes things a little bit more difficult. I'm not sure how much he trains there and stuff like that, but okay. I I just thought I would uh, you know save the hassle of turning up and then we're fighting each other in a week and we're both training there and yeah. Yeah, so, it's not, it's not what um, you want. You want to be focused, mm, don't you? So. So now we're looking at training Kiat Song Rit. Um, yeah. um, and so that that's the plan at the moment. I mean, things are always open to change, of course, but yeah, um, we're planning on planning on heading there. And as long as you know, sort of we gel well as a team, then we'll stay yeah. there. I think there's so many gyms in Bangkok. Like people, I get so many messages like, where do you recommend I go? And I'm like, I couldn't tell you because it's the vibe that you yeah. get personally and mm -hmm. how you feel at a gym, but like looks one looks really good. I actually said to Gabrielle, like, I really want to go and try it there. Like, are you gonna go and try? But I'm injured, so we, we couldn't go together. But um yeah. So yeah, will will Kieran be coming for all your fights? Is he gonna stay out here? How's he because obviously he's gotta manage the gym at home. 
Yeah, so he, I'm, I'm, I mean, I believe that he'll be coming out for the fights, but he definitely won't be staying the whole Not six for the months. Whole training. I feel like the gym might fall apart. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> the gym. Um, so what yeah. about it? will Sam be coming out to train with you or? No, so so I'll be pretty much training with their their trainer and their their, their gym for the entirety of the tournament, um, and just managed from home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, I always think, like, I always miss my coaches back home. So going into, the thought of going into, like, a tournament like this without having my, my pad men, that will, yeah. that, you're just taking it all in your stride. You're just like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to fight all these, like, world, world-class <laughs> ties and I'm just going to go on my own. <laughs> like, you're really just taking it in your stride. I'm, I'm like, wow. Yeah, I feel like if you don't, it's like, at this point, you, you're going to be tripping and stumbling over everything, right? Like, yeah you just gotta take things as you start in your stride eventually like you were saying um it's like I was I was speaking to a friend this morning like the whole group is killers there is no easy fight everyone you fight is dangerous and it's almost like now you just look at they're just opportunities like it, it at the end of the day the worst thing that happens is you get you get knocked out obviously it's not very pleasant but you get knocked out yeah. and you don't you don't make it through you go home and uh, I hate to be all philosophical, but you go home and you're not the best this year. You go sit with your family and at the end of the day, they still care about you, still love you. So it's like, yeah. you just, you know, it's you're just fighting and it's a sport. It is, it is part of the game. Mm. I just say, you, the, my mum always says to me when I fight, there can only be one winner and one loser. There mm. is literally just one of each. And then on to the yeah. next. Yeah, that, yeah, that's how I see it. Um, that's it. Oh my God, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I have one more question for you because someone asked me this and I thought it was a really good question. So what? Um, who inspired your style? Because obviously you're saying that you're going into this tournament with these world-class fighters, but I've watched your last two fights on RWS and your style is you've outclassed your opponent. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, how has he just done that? <laughs> so who you. would you say or what fighter or even coach has inspired your style to to be this like um, kind of technical you're so technical but also so like powerful as well um I think uh, a large portion of it like if you watch young Sangmini okay. um when he was like in his in his heyday when He's Sangmini fine. was in his heyday he was um he had this sort of like he has that sort of humor style where he'll come forward still uh quite light on his feet and and uh, not sort of stay in his own box. The sort of humor style that a lot of people think of is like that sort of sitting back and, yeah, and relaxing sort of thing. Court. But he's, he was very light and he'd move lots and there was a little bit more movement to him. And I really liked the way that it was like a bit, it was a bit more dynamic. He's a lot yeah. He's a lot more off, off the line. He's moving a bit more. Um, and he was dangerous with all weapons, which was important to my dad when he was like training me when I was young, oh, he has a bit that. more of that Western and English style. So he, he likes the, the boxing a bit more and he likes that yeah. sort of stuff. But I've always been quite a traditionalist and I like the way that the ties fight. So mixing those two together worked really well for him. Um, and I would just sit for hours watching those Muay Thai videos that people go back and watch, you know, <laughs> like yeah, his yeah. fights against Tan on Chai and things like that. Um, I'd watch him for hours and hours and hours. Um, and then when I was really young, I mean, everyone watched Sanchai, but I think he's the most uh, underappreciated because he's so appreciated fighter. Yeah. Everyone yeah. watches him when they first start Muay Thai and then they feel like it's stereotypical to say that Sanchai's Because it's like, oh, Sanchai, Sanchai, everyone talks about yeah. him. Yeah. But yeah. then you go back and you watch and he is that good and undoubtedly incredible. Like, it's yeah. it's just... What he does is incredible. And when you're a kid, obviously, you don't have all those outside factors telling you, oh, this, that, that. So you, I would just jump on YouTube and I'd just watch him for hours him. and hours and hours. I love and that. I would, I love I would that. go and copy it. You know, I'd do all the crazy stuff because back then, Cartwheel. maybe like, yeah, I'd be like eight, nine years old. I'd want to do all the crazy stuff that he did. And um, it's like, it's inspiring, isn't it, when, when someone yeah. can do something like that. Yeah, and then, and then as you get older, you build an appreciation for what then what you did in the stadiums, like being able to, uh, I mean, fighting Saget down Pet Boon Chu, who were ranked two and three in the stadiums behind him, um, fighting Pet Boon Chu for rounds one, two, and three, and then Saget Dao jumps in for four and five, and he still beats them both in one fight. 
a two oh. versus one fight and he still wins kind of and it's like I'd love to see that somebody now. was that good <laughs> Yeah, he was that good. So I think that like he he inspired that style as well. And both of those boys are, are southpaws as well. So it's. Like, I was just gonna say southpaw. Yeah, that's mm. no offense, but I hate fighting southpaws. Yeah, I mean a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah. It's such hard work. It's yeah. such hard work. I actually, I've got, I could literally sit and talk to you all day, but I'm just conscious we've got like a minute. I don't know where time has gone. Um, that's but thank you so much for chatting to me and being my first interview. Like, it actually, I thought it would just when it flowed really well. I literally can't yeah, believe really we've got good. a minute left. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I hope you have a really, really good rest of your day. And no thank worries. you so much for coming on. Hopefully, we'll be no, speaking you. when you win the tournament. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah.